Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of me going through a bunch of stuff. Seems to be my life this month. <laughs> but I'm finding all kinds of neat things. This has been a treasure trove of antiques and collectibles. It was an estate that I purchased. There's been all sorts of brand new in the box toys. There's been Roy Rogers stuff. Um, I don't know. Every time I go through a box, I find something really, really cool. And today's gonna be one of those episodes when we continue to go through boxes, do some discovery and see what's inside um, these estate collection, uh, where am I going with this? This collection of estate artifacts. <laughs> Anyways, less talk, less chatter, more pitter patter. All right, and back to the opening of boxes. And look, Dukes of Hazard stuff. LCD quartz watch, Dukes of Hazard. And it looks like, yeah, it's got the outer box and is it in it? Indeed it is, a brand new 1981 Dukes of Hazzard um, wristwatch, digital wristwatch. Can't be a whole lot of those kicking around. I'm sure there's a lot of Dukes of Hazzard collectors that would love to have that sitting on their shelf with their display. And on top of it, there's even a little Dukes of Hazzard metal car in here too, put out by Ertl about 20 years ago or so. Lots of fans of that show. I used to like watching that show when I was a kid. Do do Dukes. <laughs> Okay, so aside from the Dukes of Hazard stuff, we've also got the 1960s 007 card game. And it's uh, like new, it's still factory sealed. So brand new, never used James Bond card game. That's the uh, Sesame Street playset. We'll get to that in a second. We'll see if that's actually what's in there. Sears Compu Bowl. Really early handheld video video game. And it looks like uh, you could make your ball curve and you try and hit strikes and stuff. Probably a fun game. Many a trip, many a highway trip back in the 70s of 80s in the back of an old station wagon involved something like that. Let's see. That's kind of wedged in there, but that's the Charlie Brown gift pack view master set. And another one of these Dick Tracy, found one of these before, brand new Dick Tracy um, Viewmaster set with the box. Now here's a couple of older items. Really nice Zorro Aladdin thermos. And uh, looks like somebody was trying to sell it for 120 bucks at one point. Don't know if they'd get that kind of money for it, but pretty cool. And we got a Roy Rogers Double R Bar Ranch thermos as well. And what are these cups? Oh, hang on. That's a GoBot. It is missing one of his wheels though, but I used to love this thing. Die cast metal. I know there was great debate, you know, GoBots versus Transformers. <coughs> Transformers had the story, but GoBots were kind of cool too. Gremlins cups from golf gas stations. Yep, whole set of them. Getting bandaged up. Not super happy about it. Okay. And do we have everything in here for this? I see a little Ziploc bag, so that's a good sign. Somebody was trying to keep some things together. Whoa, yes. We've got the furniture and the street lamp and the little mail, the little uh, Senate garbage truck. And we've got the figures. Big bird with its bird nest. Looks like it's pretty well all there. Neat. Here we go, a nice tin plate, 1950s kind of era. West German made, yeah, that'd be 50s for sure. Uh, Walt Disney Donald Duck clock, and I heard it ticking away earlier there. And it looks like that bell would just go to moment's notice if I move it to the right position. But that'll wake you up in the morning. 
the old school alarm clock. If this was actually Donald Duck show, he'd probably hit it with a hammer or something. <laughs> a neat little item. Okay, it's wound up, it's ticking away, and let's see if that alarm still works on this. Yep. That'd wake you up. Well, this bin's labeled Castle Grayskull, and inside we find, yep, Castle Grayskull, but it looks like it's got its accessories, little bits and pieces that go with it. Of course, He-Man stuff, super popular right now. But that'll be a good auction item right there. Could bring somewhere uh, north of 100 bucks just for that one item alone. We shall see. Yeah, get back into the boxes here. Antique Games, Paper Dolls, Captain Kangaroo. Okay, well, there's an old guy. I wouldn't say that's antique because I had one. We had one of these sitting around when I was a kid. I think my mom still has it, actually. <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, the point of the game is to try and end up with, um, <coughs> excuse me, just one piece in the center. So you have to kind of hop, skip, and jump, and every time you jump over one. Do you guys ever play this? Am I just talking crazy? So a move could be like that space would move over to that one, and then that one comes out. And you have to do that all the way around until you're left with just one in the center. It's kind of fun, I guess. Memories. But, high Q game aside, check this out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit for you. It is Wyandotte Toys, made in USA. Mechanical shooting game. And look. It, how cool is that? The concept here is that you wind it up. I don't, I don't want to wind it just yet because... I think there's some stuff stuck down on the track there. Maybe I can clear that off and see if this thing actually works. But there's these little uh, uh, birds and stuff that kind of move along. And the goal is, of course, to try and shoot them with your target gun, which is right there, and uh, blast the little guys away. And then you can hit these targets too as they go with your darts. Really heavy piece. I got to say, having this sit on my lap here, it actually weighs a fair bit. Good old American-made steel. We'll see if it still works. Okay, well, mechanically it's working. The problem with it is the little, I'm gonna turn it off. The little elastic band is just a little bit stretched. So for it to uh, work properly, you'd probably have to have a new band put on there, but otherwise it's working great. It's in near perfect shape, uh, probably because it's been in its box for, since almost brand new. And what a nifty little piece this is. I love stuff like this. I love mechanical stuff. It's very, very fun, very, very cool. And look, I figured out what this thing is, the strutting My Fair Dancer. Well, I had one of these earlier and I couldn't figure out <coughs> what it was for because it was missing uh, its arms and head. But there's a little doll head that squishes on top. This is one of those brand new in the box. Again, early 50s sort of toy made in Japan. And gosh, here's... Here's a rare piece, the Walt Disney Uncle Remus game, which is essentially like a uh, sort of pinball machine with Uncle Remus and the characters from the Briar Patch in there. But this thing is in brand new condition and you know, like never been out of this box, new old stock. Found one online that had sold for $268. And I don't think it was in as nice shape as that. Hard to say what this one will sell for, but there's a lot of Disney fans out there, and this is certainly one they're not gonna make again. I can see a reissue of that coming out anytime soon. A you know, piece of history and really neat collectible. Alrighty, box number whatever this is. Three, four, something like that. We have a Coca-Cola serving tray. We're replicating the 1900s kind of style. We've got another. Identical one, and let me guess. Oh, that one's a little different. So some Coke trays, right there. And this is where you get the, back to the actual old ones. They're more like this shape. That's showing like a 1930s Coke ad, but this probably came out in the 50s. Retro even then. Oh, here's a neat one. Let's see if it's real. This is a uh, Beatles serving tray. Well, good news is, made in Great Britain, that's a good sign. And it has the uh, original sticker right on the back of it too, which is good. 
tray should be the decoration on this tray should be give should give a reasonable life since it is protected by cleared hard varnish oven baked. So if you're worried about it, and look, you can see the girl who owned it, Melanie. This was hers at one time. So there's an original 1960s Beatles tray. They had so much merchandise out there and they really didn't benefit from it at all because of the terrible business deal that they that their manager had struck. Poor guy contributed to his death, they, they feel, after losing out on all that revenue. I think he was more upset that the Beatles lost out on the revenue. It is a 1940s Coca-Cola serving tray. Pretty little picture. Is this all serving trays in here? Well, there's another one. Not that I'm complaining. These are typically worth between you know $40 and $50 each, sometimes a little bit more. Oh, look. Another Beatles tray. These are actually worth um, a little over $100. Sometimes a bit better than that. That one I think would clean up a little bit. It's just dusty. I'll set it aside so I can clean it later. Give it a wipe down before it goes out. Oh, it's a GoBots Zod enemy, enemy robot monster, and it's motorized. So still in its original packaging from the 1980s, GoBots were like the the lesser transformer, you might say. Even though I thought they were look, it doesn't really do much. Look. It essentially looks like it's, oh, look, it's on the ground, so it must be a motorized vehicle. Oh, and then it, look, it stands up, so that makes it a robot. <laughs> Some of their other ones are a little bit more interesting. In fact, I quite liked the cars that they did, probably because I'm a car guy, but any of these die-cast metal cars, oh, those were my favorites. And that kind of makes me feel like collecting. Actually, I still have the, the yellow one here that was sitting there. They're just neat, and they do transform nicely. i got to find a wheel for it, but... I always did like my GoBots, that's true. Okay, clearing out the rest of the box, we've got a uh, Ghostbusters Volkswagen. I thought that windscreen was bent, it actually popped right back up. We got a little Tonka Jeep, a uh, airplane, like a spacey looking airplane uh, piggy bank, battery operated dog, and this, the Game of Nations. Now, if you if you have not seen this before, um, you'd be just like me because <laughs> I haven't seen one before either. I'm guessing that this is well over 100 years old based on the graphics and the subject matter, of course. I think, you know, we're looking at a set of these uh, cards that have got to be going back to probably like the early, eight, like maybe not early 1900s or possibly late 1800s. No, well, there's a two-wheeled bicycle, so that's got to put it in the... It's funny that this must have been made in Europe. No, it says it was made in New York. It's funny that for Europe, they put like a, a kid on a bicycle. And for America, they still show teepees and stuff. But um, anyway, really interesting artwork on this set. Have not, have never seen one before, frankly. It's got to be a fairly unique piece. And uh, I guess we'll see how, how it will do with the sale. But I think that's just got really interesting looking graphics and artwork on it. I have been working on this pretty well all day, and I found some nice, um, these are Arnold German template. They mainly just did that body style. I don't know if, why, maybe just for cost-saving measures. Um, but this came in convertibles, and they had remote control wind-up versions. This is a friction version. That's the police car, and then they've got the fire chief car, which is essentially the same thing. Those are pretty cool. Um, we're going to dig into another box now, and I was kind of excited because I saw this right off the hop well engine's a tiny bit loose there but that is a cool piece is it not a little ford gt kind of looking uh actually that wouldn't be a ford that would be more like a i don't know chaparral or something i don't know it's cool anyway boy is that ever neat it's got the probably the engine would have lit up like it had spark plugs going in there <coughs> oh this is cool this is one of the um neater uh that's upside down it goes in from the underside and gets clipped in i have to take it apart it's a ford mustang quite a large one too it's bigger than 118 scale it's like 116 scale or i don't know something like that they gave it a retractable hardtop which of course it never had 
The problem is this particular unit is missing the trunk lid, kind of an integral part of the car. Um, it looks like it's got all its hubcaps, otherwise steering wheel is missing an action. Oh no, it's missing one hubcap. That would have been a really cool collectible piece. It's still neat. And I might be able to find parts for this online. Maybe I'll find parts for it in the box, but that, oh gosh, that is so cool. I like that myself, if you can't tell. But I'm not here to find things that I like. I'm here to find things that uh, other people might like. This is neat. Wyandotte Toys, same as that uh, shooting gallery game I found earlier. Nice American company that did press steel trucks and toys. This is a little miniature, well, I just wouldn't say miniature, but it's a smaller scale uh, press steel car hauler. And it would have had, I imagine, like little plastic sort of cheap cars on the top. That's off a Lionel um, flat car from a train set, but it would have been that sort of idea anyway. It's a little bit smaller vehicles that went on there. Kind of neat though, don't you think? And I don't have the Lionel flat car, so I might just go ahead and attach that with it just so somebody gets a little car to go along with it. It maybe even had little wind-up cars. I'll have to search online and see. Oh, look, there's another Space Shuttle Challenger truck. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the shuttle here, but that's actually a Transformer, 1980s Transformer. Some toys from my generation in the mix. Here's a nice condition. It's nice to get some nice stuff because there's been a lot of project things, but it is encouraging to find cool things like the race car, um, or other little treasures, little Corvette in there, uh, that are in good condition. And I see some things in the boxes, like this, a little see-through telephone bank money box. And lots of little goodies that are wrapped up. I see the robot there. Behind it, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, this is gonna be a little walking figure, I bet. Oh no, it's a Jeep, a little remote control army Jeep. That guy's got no neck. Must be a bumpy ride in that Jeep. His neck has all but disintegrated. And this says it's a funny robot, funny amusement robot. This would be more like um, probably 1970s or 80s when this came out, made in Hong Kong. You can see the shift from made in Japan to made in Hong Kong after a while. And what do we have here? Twister 427, price tag on it, <coughs> funny car. It's a Chevy 2, which is like a Nova. Let's see. Nope, that's not what's in there though. It's one of those Hubbly kit cars. Cool box though. I mean, it is a model, it's a metal model kit that's in there. But I feel like that, this is the box for that Hubbly car. Or close to it. 32 Ford Custom Hubbly metal kit. Oh, well, okay. That appears to be can't really tell right now if it's complete. I only see two wheels. That's not a great sign. But maybe there's parts floating around. Make your own repairs. Don't mind if I do. I'll start by finding the missing wheels for it. Neat little kit. Wheels are probably in that box with that other Hubbly kit. And let's see. What do we have here? I really actually don't know what we have here. I'm asking you at home, like you might have a clue of what we have here. It is a little uh, tin plate clockwork tractor. Metoy. With a little uh, parking brake on it. And we've got some other, let's see. Various little, those aren't terribly old, those jets. Yeah, tin plate friction Corvette. But this is a uh, replica of a 1950s toy. It's still really cool because it is a tin plate friction car. You know, it looks super duper neat. Uh, but this would have come out probably in the late 80s, I want to say, mid, mid to late 80s, as a uh, repop of the real deal. But still like it, still think that's pretty cool. 
Oh, look, another one of these Hubley kits. And another Hubley kit. That one's particularly cool. That's the Indianapolis 500 race car. That's a little bit more interesting, isn't it? Did anybody build it? <coughs> or is it still in kit form? It's still there. And I don't know if that's... It looks like hay or something made its way in there. Well, this one has all four of its wheels. The body, I can see the engine bit, so that might be a complete kit. Hubcaps. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't seen this one in its kit form. I've had parts of this car before. I've never had the whole thing. That's pretty neat. And then we've got some catalogs from American Flyer and Erector Set instructions. Something flew out of there. A little uh, aircraft carrier. A little tin aircraft carrier. And there's something wrapped up in here too. Oh, it's a sweetheart of a little El Camino. Made in Japan. Really nice shape actually. It's got a little bit of rust in the back, but friction drive still works on it. Cool. <laughs> now I've got to start organizing this mess because I've made a big pile all over the place. It's got to get sorted. This is my sorted stuff ready to go this is my unsorted stuff right now i've got more unsorted stuff laying around than i should have because i'm running out of table space and selfishly i'm kind of keeping some things aside that i think are cool that i will have to emotionally detach from because right now i'm like oh that's the coolest thing ever and uh if i'm not careful i'm gonna i don't have a lot of shelf space for this type of stuff in my house so i have to be somewhat cautious but i do like it a lot and i even like that mustang too Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what makes, what cuts the mustard to come into my own collection. Well, that's a pretty good pile for today. I'm going to come back and uh, film again tomorrow as I sort through the rest of this stuff. And I'm excited to go through some of these other boxes. That'll be next episode when I go through some of this other stuff and see what other treasures await. So thanks for watching another episode of me clearing all this stuff out and doing some discovery in boxes. Uh, again, I hope you like these unboxing videos. It's fun for me. It's also a lot of work, but it's fun. <laughs> uh, stay tuned for more episodes, guys. We'll see you all soon. And uh, this is all getting ready for a big auction sale, which will be happening uh, mid-December 2022. Not sure when you guys are watching this, but if you're like, when's this auction? And it's the year 2300, and for some reason this video is still up, you'll know. <laughs> you might have missed it. Anyway, guys, uh, we'll see you soon, and as always, bye for now.